Good morning everybody. Well, I'm walking up the locks today because I'm hoping to meet up with two friends of mine, Helen and Russell, because they've got an electric boat. Yes, now I've never seen an electric boat before, so I'm quite excited and I'm going to share it with you. So this is the Professor Pat Pending, and you can't even hear it. I can hear the lock up there, but I can't hear the boat. So we'll go into all the details later because you can hear all the noise from the lock gate. But look at the amount of solar panels on this boat, just under two kilowatts of solar. So now on board, Professor Pat Pending with the lovely Precious. You can't even hear that engine, can you? Look how silent it is compared to mine, eh? What do you think? Is the motor's running now? Yeah, that's, that's running now in backwards, in reverse. Let's have a look at your knob. Oh, you've only got a little one, haven't you? Look at <laughs> yeah. that! Oh, it's tiny! <laughs> I've got a big one. So the little knob does all this forward and reverse, not like mine when I've got a wheelie thing and a big hoo hoo. So Russell let me have a little go with his knob. But I was a little bit too rough with it. I'm going to drive out these locks now. Oh, you don't need much, do you? Wow, can't believe I'm driving electric boat <laughs> and it's a it's a bit weird having just a little knob in your hand yeah it's really weird because you can't hear the engine so you don't know how many revs to give it and i was giving it too much yeah over pressing it over pushing it whereas my boat i have to really really give it some wheelie stuff to get the revs on So we're currently doing 600 RPM, which is 1.8 miles an hour. Yes. So we're doing, wow, you can't hear a thing. It's amazing. See, I'd be drifting off to sleep, me, if that was me. So I'm used to like, bat, 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 all the time. <laughs> can't believe how quiet it is and how good for the environment as well. So one of the brilliant things about this boat, I know we're shaded now because under trees, is when it's in neutral, like now we are in a lock, it actually then, the solar starts charging the batteries. Yeah, so it's just showing you now, it's putting in a little bit, only 0.1 kilowatt, but it's putting in a little bit, just being in neutral in a lock. I mean, it has some power. When he presses his little knob, he doesn't half get some power out of there if you press it up, don't you? Yeah, 20 kilowatts. 20 kilowatts, wow. So you'll be all right on the river, won't you, and everything? Yeah, the other ultramarine boats have all been on the river. We haven't yet, because we need to get used to the boat and we haven't got the experience. So we're, we're doing all that next year. We want to do the Rebel Link and other places, so. I'm just going to stop for water now, but just listen, listen. Nothing. 
how peaceful is this? And when you do hear noise, it's just the water going over the propeller. So quiet. So whilst Russell and Helen were filling the boat up with water, I came to have a look at this old classic. And just for comparison, we've got the old with the new. Wow. Let's find out how old this is. She's 109. 109. And her name's Judith. Because she's a Chalmers and I couldn't think of anybody else called Chalmers. <laughs> it's the original five litre four cylinder. It is the original Chalmers engine, yeah. Wow, thank you very much. Gorgeous. When, where have you driven from? Oh, it's only a little trip, seven or eight miles, not far. So this boat has got every little bit of gadgetry. That shows us how much fuel we've got left, how much water we've got, uh, sets the alarm, Turn the deck lights off, you can override the bilge pumps and turn them on instead of them being on automatic. And the temperatures for inside the cabin, the engine bay, uh, the hot water and the battery temperatures. So we're just looking at the, I'm looking at this app, it's absolutely brilliant. All, everything on this phone. I'm just looking now how much charge they're getting just whilst the phone up with water. Yeah, from the solar. So I bet a load of you are thinking, as well as me, is when you've got no solar, like here when we're under trees, how do you actually charge it? So let's ask Russell. We've got an inbuilt generator that we can turn on. It gives us enough to charge the batteries, run the oven, heat the hot water. It runs on HVO, which is hydrogenated vegetable oil. So it's 90% cleaner than running on diesel, but it's more expensive. Um, yeah, so the HVO, we were able to source a tank full with the new build boat from the boat builders, um, but currently you can get it from a marina in, on the Middle Witch, or you can get it delivered by a couple of companies. And how much does it cost for this HVO, a litre, do you know? Uh, I think it's around £2 a litre at the moment, so it is more expensive than diesel. This HVO stuff is the environmental friendly stuff, like an alternative to diesel, but it's expensive still. Now, I would use it in my engine. I really would, just for the environmental reasons, but I'm not paying £2 a litre. If they did make it when they took the tax off and that, I would definitely, definitely use it. This is how posh these guys are. So we're just here now and Russell looks on his app and says to Helen, oh, Helen, we only need 60 more litres because his app's telling him, how posh is that? Whereas me, it's when it squirts its load all over the place, I know I'm full. <laughs> just want to welcome a new patron to the channel, Harvey Hewitt. Welcome on board. I'm just walking alongside it now and I just can't believe how quiet it is compared to mine. Wow. And how economical as well. Yeah, it's just all about taking little steps to protect the environment. So I'm now sat in the crutch and you just can't hear anything apart from the lock gear. It's just amazing, so, so quiet. Love it. Oh, I better lean in. You don't want to get this slimy lock jism on your clothes.
and just in contrast that was just a normal boat with a modern engine going past there and uh, yeah you could hear that but you can't hear out in here no oh so peaceful Precious is loving it, but she wants to moor up now and go to the pub. I can tell. Gorgeous. So they've all moored up now next to this gorgeous view. You're all dying to see what it's like inside, aren't you? I can tell, I can tell. Right, come on. Look at these. Helen painted the roses and castles on this boat. So with this boat being a reverse layout, you enter from the stern straight into the galley. What's this here? That's the bread maker. Oh. So there's a loaf. Baking at the moment, as we talk. Yes, look, it's needed. Wow, how posh is that? And talking of posh, this is the cupboard with all the electrics for all the gadgetry on this boat. There's also a washing machine here, an electric oven and an induction hob. Very, very posh. So this Ottomarine boat has also got quite a lot of storage. Under the dinette here, they keep the freezer. Yeah, a little chest freezer in there. So they're making the best of all the space possible on this boat. There's another table under here. So that's got a leg, so you can have two tables and seat four. There's a big table under the bed, which can go this way. So you can have two settees and seat six. Wow. Or this can be a king size bed or these slide. And if you slide these up and put the two small tables in, it makes a small double bed. So this is the saloon area. You've got your nice comfy chairs. There's a little fire there, a telly, a Blu-ray player. Oh, you've got everything you need. These are all Precious's toys. <laughs> Her favourite gorilla. Aww. <laughs> My wood carving. Did you do that? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I went to a wood carving club where we used to live and there was a lady that taught us how to do that. So now on to the bathroom. This is Joe's mat. From Minimalist. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. How have you got it onto there? It's printed onto. So Joe gave me a, a file in a certain format and Ottomarine sent it off. I think they use Rico Surfaces Limited. They send off the file and they Rico print it onto the material. Wow. That is amazing. That's a nice bright mirror. See, my bathroom's quite dark. Yeah, that's lovely. Wow, a nice big bathroom. It's gorgeous. Look at these little sensor lights. These just come on when you're walking down. So in the night, you don't have to put a big light on. Hey, brilliant. Oh, it's gorgeous, this. Oh, wow. And this is your bedroom. Yeah. Masses of storage under the bed. Wow. Half the world's under there. And, you, and you've got wardrobes <laughs> two, there? Two, yeah, two um, single wardrobes. Wow. Chest drawers and storage in the step. That's brilliant. All my shoes. Russell doesn't have any space for his shoes. Ah, <laughs> <my. laughs> uh, that's lovely. Oh, it's gorgeous, guys. I love it. And do you love it, Russell? Yes, yeah. yeah. So, exactly what we wanted. Ottomarine took everything we wanted and just made it happen. So before we go to the pub, I've asked to see in his big dirty hole, so let's have a look. I bet it's not dirty either. I want to see how many batches he's got. Excuse the nappy. A little nappy there to catch the drips, you know, us ladies. Look how nice and clean this engine bay is. Look at all them batteries. Wow. So how many batches have you got, Russell? 24 lead carbon batteries, uh, 800 amps, 48 volts. 
we can use 30 kilowatts of power on the 240 side before we have to worry about the batteries. 24 batteries and they're all lead carbon. Amazing. It's not very patient. It's not, <laughs> you want to go to the pub, don't you, Precious? We're off to the pub now. Yeah, so get you, whip your wrap out and let's tell us how many kilowatts we've used today on that little cruise. That's the current state of the batteries, 81%. Yeah. And this morning when we lo left lock three, there was a 82.8. So we've used 1.8% of the battery capacity doing, juggling the 13 locks wow. and making the bread. Wow, it's amazing really. It would be interesting to see how you get on in winter though, wouldn't it? Yes. And, yes. and like you were saying earlier, you can just always take it into a marina for a couple of nights, charge it yeah. up and then... Charge Whatever advised us that clothes. we should go in every six weeks just to yeah. give the batteries a good boost. But after the summer we've had, you've not had to do any of that, have you? No, no, I've had them in float every month off Fantastic. the solar. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we're in the pub, yeah, so cheers. Anyway, I've got a question for Helen, which is, why have you called your boat Professor Pat Pending? Well, we had a lot of deliberation and we, in the end, we decided on that because we're a bit wacky, we love wacky races. And also there's a kind of double meaning because the Pat Pending is a nod towards the modern tech that she's got on board. So guys, how have you actually found living with an all-electric boat? It's been really good. Um, we've had about 85% of all our power needs from the solar. In our last 165 days, we've only used 95 litres of, of HVO to make up for the uh, non-sunny days. So I'm on the gin and tonic today, guys, yeah? Felt like a refreshing change. So I'm going to ask Helen now about the generator because I know sometimes it can be quite dull, the weather, and they've got a Jenny on board. So I just wanted to know how you go about running that. So we use our generator if the battery power is dropping. Usually if we're getting much below 80%, we tend to run it for a bit. Um, and while we're doing that, we usually do it at the end of the day. And at the same time, we will then cook dinner, put the washing machine on, etc. Because the more load that we put on the uh, generator, the more efficient it is. So we like to get as much as we can out of that litre of HVO that we're running. So we've had a nice little time at the pub and some uh, food. But we're heading back now. And I was just asking Russell, so Precious is here, I'm going to fall over the dog. I was just asking Russell about, can they run the generator when they're actually cruising? You know, in the depth of winter, say, they've not had any solar. We can put the generator on and we can run the motor off the generator and charge the batteries as well. And that will give us a hot water and, and Helen can use the 240 volts as well to, to do any cooking while we're cruising. That's brilliant. So it's just like a normal boat then, isn't it? You know, yeah, putting your yeah, normal... Yeah, just like a normal... Like beta engine. Yeah, yeah, put your normal engine on, get everything on, and you're charging at the same time. Yeah. Just don't need to at the moment because we've had a fantastic summer and they're doing it all fully electric. Hey guys, I do admire you both. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm back home now and I've got myself a dark and stormy. Yeah, my friend Mark that I met on the Langothan last year, he taught me this recipe. It's basically rum and ginger beer. Now, if you can have alcoholic ginger beer at the same time, that's even better, but I haven't. So it's rum and ginger beer, and it's lovely, dead refreshing. So cheers! Mmm. Oh. So yes, I've had an absolutely fantastic day today, playing on an all-electric narrowboat. Wow, absolutely fantastic. And Helen and Russell are so conscious about the environment, and that's why they went for that particular build. And yes, it does have a generator. All those are going, well, yeah, but it still has a generator. It does, but they are really conscious about when they run that generator. They're not just going to run it willy-nilly. They'll run it if they need to charge the batteries, but at the same time, they'll have the bread maker on, they'll do their cooking. So they do everything together so it's using less. So in that one hour of putting that Jenny on, they're trying to do as much as they can. But yeah, so we're just going to have to see how they get on with it, really, aren't we? Because it's quite new to them and winter is on its way. But like they said, they're going to nip into marina for a couple of nights every so often. So we'll see. And we'll have an update, eh, in the future. 
but a stunning boat and an absolutely lovely couple. <laughs> so anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me and subscribe down below. Absolutely free to do. But before I go, a big shout out to this week's pirate crew. And here they are, me hearties. Andrew White, Alan Harbit, Motorhead, Helen Craig, Alison, Stuart and Carol from Narrowboat Foxy Doxy, David Van Wart, Julie and Steve from Narrowboat Down the Hatch, Angela, Fishless Clive, Norm and Laura Vandal Handel, Captain Morgan, Lane and Larry, Faye Bayliss, Janice Totham Davis, Mark Grunenberg, and Martin Buzzing. Thank you very, very much. Also, a huge thanks to my Patreons who support me constantly. So thank you so much, guys. Anyway, that's it, guys. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. And the thing is, when you get car parks right next to the canal, sometimes you get a little bit of dogging going on. <laughs>